Hello, Jack. So thank you very much for welcoming me today for speaking about photography, but more than just photography, speaking about classic photography. So, uh, Jack, I have a couple of questions to discuss with you and I'm very interested in knowing your point of view and also speak about your career as a photographer across oh. the seas and in the Ainos countries. Okay. But my first question uh, will be basically why did you choose classic photography? Why choosing classic photography? Well, um, I will go to define a little bit what is for me classic photography. Um, I started in, in, a, in the old world uh, when uh, we just used films, you know, and um, analog photography, as they say today. For me, it is just classic photography. So in that time, we used a camera like this one, I've carrying about quite so several years. Yes. So, How old? Is oh, this, this is camera? this is a Nikon F4 um, with a special battery pack, um, and uh, it is about the end of the 80s. And mm -hmm. the end of the 80s is more or less when I I started my my career and uh, classic photography because I I think there's a magic in uh, film coming from the time when it was invented in the 19th century. And this, that magic is still there. It's a mix, a combination between um, chemical, uh, so the film and all the other compounds that we use to develop the film. And uh, mm, the way it, it sees uh, the reality, the outer world. So I think there's a kind of magic in there. And uh, I like this um, material one. That, uh, I mean, by there that you have to develop the film. Uh, so you use chemical light, and then you have something. Uh, on your light box, for example, you can see, you can print it. It was in that time a very simple way. Today is still a simple way, but uh, of course, you know what? Turn it completely um, on digital. It can um, seems as um, spatial or difficult to use or, or what else. It, actually, it is not. Actually, it is not. It is more simple to use chemical and and, and larger than than a scanner and a computer, and and it is very simple. You know, you don't need any, any energy, no, nothing. It is very, very simple. Mm -hmm. um, so the, I, I like this manual side of the, of the story, mm -hmm. the manual side of the story. The, the, and of the classic art. photography also because it's still black and white and doesn't. Um, yes, I, I do prefer. Different for. I do prefer. I do prefer. For me, classic photography is mostly in black and white. It is maybe because I use just black and white mm -hmm. with film. Uh, I abandoned color film a long, a long ago. I think that on that side, maybe digital has been farther. You know, uh, so you can do really, the color are not the same. I had a discussion very late, lately with a professional, a printer, professional printer who told me, yes, oh, I, I did scan and print some Kodachrome mm -hmm. and the color were absolutely unique and fantastic and you do, don't have it in, in, uh, in digital. Okay, why not? But it is quite complicated and um, not stable at all. Um, we know how, how long can last more or less black and white. So I work for museums and they, they ask, always ask me to when I work in black and white, to give them something stable they can put in the archive. Mm -hmm. So they document, they can find the perfect shape, let's say, uh, for quite a long time. So I do, I do black and white classic photography. Mm -hmm. So this um, led me to ask you, what are the photographers 
uh, who have a bit shape your taste and inspire you and yeah. the one you you would prefer or you wanted to reach their yeah. level oh. oh well um perhaps it's something which evaluate through time or yeah i i think that um, i started taking pictures um more seriously let's say when i was about 20 20 something i was in an art company and i start making um photography the plateau mm -hmm. so that we, we were making short movies and this kind of stuff and so i had to document this and taking portraits and uh, you know this kind of stuff um so uh, for example that time i i I really appreciate whatever I was able to find, but mind that I, in that time, I used to live in Genoa. Genoa in the eighties was a sea city, still is of course, but compared to today with internet and so on, and to get information, books and so on, it was very hard and it was very expensive. So uh, it was not easy to find, um, to find photography or photography book uh, from abroad and so on. So, mm -hmm. you know, the choice was the a little bit... The access was... Uh, exactly. Um, so, uh, of course, I, I went immediately over the big names. Yeah. Ansel Adams, Robert Carper, uh, McCullin. Maybe McCullin discovered a little bit later on, but, you know, still there. And those, again, classics. Um, of course, Ansel Adams was for me uh, quite inspiring because uh, it was impossible to, to reach such a level for a young man like me starting and with no... Did you, did you try to imitate them? I can't say imitate because I, I, don't, I really don't like that. Um, no, I tried to find my own way, but I've been inspired. And yes, that, that's true, absolutely true and unchallenged uh, Ansel Adams. It was impossible. Perfection in, in the print and, and so on. So it was... Uh, that's not, kind of, and and uh, Ansel Adams wrote also some books. Mm -hmm. So he, he was um, uh, a teacher and, and um, you know... So um, that was uh, really important. Then, of course, I, I moved out, I went to France and it was easier to find other things. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, really, um, I'm a passionate about um, visual art. So, it is not only photography, but I really love paintings and so on, and graphics and everything of this kind, you know, visual. And in uh, photography history, paintings and photography were always mixed together. Uh, one inspiring the other. Uh, for example, in the second part of the 19th century, with the, this new uh, artistic uh, idea of naturalism, mm -hmm. for example, they wanted the painters wanted to describe the everyday work of life. For example, in you know, the villages, in town, whatever, and and a lot of them um, used the photography to take a, the picture in the moment and then to rework it in paintings. So uh, when you see it, you immediately you recognize that it was a picture. It is almost impossible for some, somebody painting uh, to, to remake exactly, but they wanted to reproduce the light, the feeling, that was most important. And it is what is important for me. Uh, so what is inspiring in those uh, big names is the mood or maybe the light or you can say okay we just try to to get the same uh, feeling of that time and you, you take picture you take pictures for example in the 30s as well as after the war um, it, they, they are different huh? they are different not because of how sure. people are dressed no it is just a different use of light mm -hmm. And you recognize immediately what is it. And the atmosphere and how the people were behaving, which is completely different. Absolutely. Ex face expressions. And absolutely, um, absolutely. So you, maybe I try to I try to get there by using that mm -hmm. more than 
uh, really do as the same or copy. Or, you know, I don't like dislike really that. I try to to tell my own my own story and my own way. Mm -hmm. And so your taste and choices of inspiration evolved with your career. Can you tell <laughs> us briefly? Oh well, <laughs> the main steps of the main steps of your. Um, uh, own development as a photographer? Yeah, well, um, I love very much American photographers. Mm -hmm. They are quite particular. I, I, I mean, you, you almost, for me at least, uh, you recognize immediately uh, what is an American from an Italian or so on. Okay. Um, yeah, it is really... Uh, America, Americans photographer gave a lot to, to the photography history. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, men and women, a lot of women also, very, very interesting. And in, in, in Europe, it was a little bit different. So, um, and again, uh, again, this is history, but if you go back not so far, just for example, in our time, or at least when I was young, by there, there's many other photographers, McCullin, Donna McCullin, for example, uh, beside the mm -hmm. fact that it was a, mainly a, a war photographer. Um, it is the empathy, it is the, the way he describes uh, people and the world. This always this, for me it was important that, yeah. Um, McCullin, for me it was important uh, um, how he, he, he approached people. He can describe, he can talk about the most horrific thing like war, death and so on and always is respectful of the people and the subjects. And this is for me one main rule. So uh, in, in my long-term reportage I did in the north, for example, living with the people, we were not at war, of course, but... <clears throat> Where was it in the north? Um, I mainly worked in Finland, mm -hmm. okay? In Finland in winter time, because I like winter, I like cold and... Uh, the snow. The snow, <laughs> I, I was with, first time I was with this one, and another camera I don't have anymore. Luckily, I I bad idea to sell it. But I always try to to be close to people. But I I am me, and they are there. So I am a sociologist. Uh, I made mean, study in it. I'm graduating at university, and I. Oh, so you, yes, you have another approach. I have another just approach. Taking pictures. No, no, but taking pictures yes. come after before I, I try to tell a story. Sure. Crab. Yes. Something. Yes. That's something something intangible, but just <laughs> there. So yeah, coming back to McCullin, for me, yes, it is his approach how he, he worked with people, mm -hmm. you know, and how he deals with uh, with mm -hmm. sorrow and pain, and you have to be there, you have to be close, and, and so you can do the same. Uh, another one. In the same case was Robert Kappa. Mm -hmm. It's actually the same. It's legend. Uh, never be far. We must be on the on the action. This is true. This is why I do prefer to use prime lens like mm -hmm. this, for example. This one? May I have a look? Of course. It's quite heavy. Yes, very heavy. <laughs> the nickname uh, of this camera is the stone. <laughs> yes, uh, I got, you can feel it uh, I got around to your stone neck. To my neck. And uh, going so, to the sea, it was quite special. So for reportage, it's you spend one day with it at your neck. Yes, and then it's the other, quite the uh, other. challenging to it is. to have it to take good pictures. I can't see anything. You have to, <laughs> of course, there. Yep. Yes, and to guess many parameters, you have to be trained. Of course, <laughs> like a must. sport to be just. This is a, this is a, just to flash at the right moment. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. This is why. In the box. <laughs> yeah. This is yes. why you must study and, yes. and, uh, and practice. Practice yes. all the time. Practice all the time. It's most uh, really very important. Mm -hmm. You must practice. Even if you feel you are at a good level, nevertheless, you, you must always do that. So, this is one kind of uh, camera, but there are plenty of cameras yeah. since one century. Uh, 
how are you evolving towards uh, new techniques, mm. uh, new cameras, and what, what do you prefer? Well, um, I I think I think that uh, I prefer to have to think in my in the picture in my mind, you know, and then I try to get there. I mean, um, for example, um, this this work in Finland in winter time um, carried out with that camera. Ah, it was with this one. Yes, right. you see. Um, Well, um, I, I, in the beginning of the work, I, I really wanted to try um, color and, and black and white. Mm -hmm. I had to choose, and I realized that uh, I really wanted to describe the soul of the people, right. and, uh, and I needed something else. I needed black and white, mm -hmm. because uh, it leads you to some, another world that doesn't exist, actually. So, what do you um, see in black and white? It's yeah. something really unique with cameras. Uh, of course. Perhaps uh, some animals or insects are seen in black and white. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not an insect, so <laughs> no, no. But but you know you you, you can always uh, you study and you improve your practice you to see in black and white. You know that, for example, this this light or those colors would be something else in black and white. So you, in the end, you see in black and white. Black it takes a long time. So tones of gray and Of course, black and you white. see it in shades of gray, and but you, you train yourself. It takes a long time, of course, but you have to do that if you really want to get there. And for me, this is one of the reasons I never stopped to work with film and to, um, to develop. So on one side, I study and practice in, in black and white for taking the pictures and the other part is in the dark room.